Hi everyone. So today I'll be talking about timekeeping. We'll be looking at the details around it as well as what it looks like in the working world. But before then, let me tell you a bit about who I am. So hi everyone. My name is Lubna. As you can see from these pictures, I also studied at UCT. I graduated with a business science and um, honors in industrial psychology. I am now an HR business partner for an international company. I do lots of different things, but part of what I do is manage the payroll for the entire company, and that involves multiple entities as well as different countries. And I'll be using some of those experiences um, and incorporating it into this lecture. I also, as a side passion, I have a business where I assist people with the interview coaching as well as CV assistance and help people with the job searching journey. If you know me, you'll know that I love three things. That is cats, traveling, and KFC. But most of all, I love traveling to foreign countries to chase after cats and to eat KFC. Great, so now you know a little bit about me, let's move right in. And today we will be covering the following. We'll be looking at what timekeeping is used for, why it's important, and I'll give you real life examples of what they look like in the working world. Okay, so I thought to start off, I will, you know, there's a whole perception around timesheets in the working world. It's generally managed by the finance department. And as you can see here, I, um, here's a meme about how finance feels about timesheets. And there's literally a person that died on the bench waiting for people to submit their timesheets. So that's how that's the struggle is real, guys. So that's how finance feels about timesheets. But then how do the rest of us feel about it? And that's literally me like rolling my eyes. Oops, I forgot to submit my timesheet again. Um, as you can see in the working world, it can be a very big deal. And you know, it's to the point where some companies actually have this name and shame list where they send it to the entire company and they say the following people did not submit their timesheets. Please, can you submit the timesheets? They'll even do some people, even they, some companies will escalate it to the managers as well. And the managers would need to, um, to follow up on the employees that have not submitted. So you might be wondering, like, what's the big deal? Like, you know, what can't they just chill? But this is one of the reasons why you'll see that um, companies are big on submitting timesheets and on time for a lot of people. If they do not submit their timesheets, they do not get paid. So especially for people who uh, who don't work fixed hours where they charge per hour worked, it's important to know how many hours they've worked in order to pay them. So they would then submit that information to pay it all and that's how they would get paid. It doesn't work like that for all companies though, but just, you know, so that you have context as to like what the big deal is. And okay, so so now you understand why, what are some of the other reasons? So what is time, what are what is timesheets used for? And one of the big things is that we use it to keep a record or a track of the hours worked. And like I said, especially if you work in the auditing space or in consulting, where you go after clients, the companies generally bill the clients for the hours that you'd work on that particular client. And that's how they would then um, ascertain that using you know, the timesheet records. There's also other reasons. So for example, if you work on multiple projects and there's specific budgets allocated to those projects, then we'd want to know, uh, you know, how, you know, how much time are you spending on that? And you shouldn't be overspending, if that makes sense. The other reason is also in terms of regulation. So I know that, you know, if you have your auditors will come into the company and they would actually want to look at timesheets and see whether that matches according to the leave people took as well as what they got paid. And also, if you work in the donor funded space as well, that that's a big thing that they'd look at. So what are the risks if, if you do not complete the timesheets properly? And you can see that you know it's used to make sure that you're making sure that you're not overpaying or underpaying people. It's also used for fake or ghost employees. You know, if you know you check also, you know, are there any discrepancies between the leave and payroll as well as the timesheets? And it's also making sure that you're billing the correct hours to your clients and to projects. 
Now, if you're wondering what fake or ghost employees are, it's actually a real thing. Uh, we, I actually know of a company where somebody had left the company, but for some other reason, that information did not pull through to payroll. And what happened then is that this person got paid like three months after they had left, they were still being paid a salary because no one had picked up. And if you think that is bad, I also know of another company where uh, this guy was still being paid three months after he had died. So yeah, so you can see like why this is so important as well. Great, so now that you have a better understanding of timekeeping and timesheets, I thought why not show you an example of what it looks like? And what's cool about this example is that I actually completed this timesheet when I was like a like a fresh graduate, you know, one of my first jobs. And I also had to complete this timesheet as well. Uh, this was done in Excel. This is an extract from an Excel um, template. I had to put my name down, name of the client. Um, as you can see over there, you know, in the time section, in was I had to put the, the, the time I started, then out was when I took my lunch break, in was again when I came back from the lunch break, and then out was you know the time that I left on that day. As you can see, there's a normal column as well. That means for normal hours worked, OT stands for overtime. And if you're wondering why does overtime um, have its own column, it's because some companies who do pay overtime, they generally pay your overtime at 1.5 times the normal rate which means that you pay, you get paid a little bit more if you um, work overtime compared to the normal hours. There's also a column for sick leave and for VAC. VAC stands for vacation or annual leave. So that's what that is for. At the bottom, you'll see that there's a space for a signature for a manager or the contractor, so the client, so that they can verify that those were the hours that you worked. Okay, so that's how a manual timesheet looks like in Excel. But most companies, uh, especially if they, you know, more advanced and if they have like like thousands of employees would rather use a system to record like the leave and timesheets. So over here is an example of what a leave system looks like because the leave system then feeds into the timesheet system. Sometimes it's the same system. The, one, the example that I'm showing, they're different. But over here you can see it says Sage. So this system is called Sage VIP. And over here you can see I've applied for annual leave. And um, you can see that it's like a half day's annual leave. And if you're wondering what an employee code is, so just think of it like a student card for you in the working world. So it's a way to identify who you are. So for example, if we have 10 Zanelli Dlaminis, then the employee code would help us to identify which Zanelli Dlamini is actually taking leave. So that's how that is. Oh, and by the way, um, if you are planning to go for interviews and leave your current company, it's probably not a good idea to advertise that you're going for interviews. So just a slight tip over there. Okay, so the next slide is actually showing you it's an extract from an actual timesheet or timekeeping system. So as you can see that the leave, whatever I've submitted on the leave system has actually pulled through into the timekeeping system. And if you look at the little circle, red circle over there, it shows four hours worked. So that is a half day because the normal hours is like an eight hour work day. And because I'm taking a half day's leave, or I took a half day's leave, it shows the four hours. If you're wondering what the highlighted bits were, that is because those days are um, weekend days. And so most of us don't work on weekends and that's why you know there's a zero there. The other thing that I want to point out to you is that you can see that there are two sort of rows there. That is if you're dealing with multiple projects. So you can, so for example, if I'm working a full day, I can, you know, the top project, I could say like I've worked three hours on the top project and the rest of the day, which is five hours, I've worked in the bottom project. And that's how you can determine your hours worked per project as well, or even per client, depending on how the system is set up. Great, and so that is, or on timesheets, I hope you understand now why it's important and I hope I've encouraged you to actually submit your timesheets when you go into the working world. But if the slides weren't enough, I thought maybe this picture would actually, you know, encourage you even more. So thanks for listening. And if you have any questions and if you'd like to get in touch, 
I'm happy to chat to you through any one of my social media platforms. You're welcome to ask any questions and I'll be happy to assist. So thanks so much and good luck with your with the rest of your lessons. Bye.